how, how much better do you think your club got today with these three acquisitions? Well, I, I think we're better. I don't think, you know, how much better are we? I, I mean, I, I know we're a better ball club. I mean, I think we tried to address, um, we're trying to address some certain areas um, combined with knowing that we're getting Segura back, uh, I don't know, hopefully Thursday, but soon. And then uh, Harper making progress, uh, which is very encouraging. So we'll get both of them back. Um, and then when we looked at, well, what else do we need to address? People don't talk much about it, but I understand it. But we got Sosa and Mundo Sosa last week. We think he's an outstanding defensive shortstop with a chance to hit, too, as time goes on. And then we, we keep talking about our defense. We, you know, we've also talked about needing a center fielder. And um, we really like Brandon Marsh a lot. I think he's a quality young player, a, a gold glove type center fielder from a defensive perspective. Still young and growing from an offensive perspective. But our, uh, our hitting people think that he has some very correctable areas for them to work with and have a great deal of faith in them. And, and it's hard, been hard to find a center fielder, as you know. But so here's a guy that, uh, in addition to but now Matt Gearley not there, but you feel comfortable putting him out in center and just go get the ball. So now you're better defensively out there. And then uh, we are looking at it, and, and I didn't know we were going to. I was starting to think we weren't going to get a starting pitcher. Um, it became very questionable with just the ask were very, very high. Um, and we really talked about stabilizing then the one part of our club, which has been very good, but even making it better with David Robertson, which we did. We like him a great deal. think he can pitch um, high leverage innings along with a lot of our other people. And then uh, at the last minute, uh, the last 15 minutes or so, Anaheim came back to us and and asked us uh, about the Syndergaard. We've been talking to them about Syndergaard for a couple of days. And they finally, I guess, whatever else they were working out didn't, didn't work for them. So for me, we were able to add a, a starting pitcher, a bullpen guy, which we like, uh, solidify our ball club from a defensive perspective and everyday position player, and then um, also add with the injury. So I think we're a lot better ball club. We got a tough division and tough people who are in the race, but I think we're better. What Syndergaard, you know, his stuff is down from where it once was. What yeah. gives you guys confidence that, you know, you have him for the next two months that he's going to be an effective pitcher for you? Well, his stuff is down from where he was in the past. There's no question about that. But he's still throwing, you know, mid-90s. with. The, he's just a different pitcher. He throws with tremendous sink. He's got a great sinker at this point. Um, that's his primary pitch. But he's pitched very effectively this year in a five, six-inning type of role. Uh, we think, uh, again, with our other starters in a rotation, we're not looking for a number one type of guy and the, the number one type people we had talked about. We never really dallied in that market because there were a few players in our organization that we just didn't want to give up. And that's what it was going to cost if you were going to dally in that market. So for us, uh, it was a matter of uh, we still think Syndergaard's an effective major league pitcher. I'm thinking get big leaguers out with the bullpen that we have. If we can get five to six strong innings out of our guys, now we have, we're deep enough, I think, in the pen, too. We're in a position where um, we can win some ball games that way. Dave, uh, Logan O'Hoppy for, for Brandon Marsh. Um, can you talk about, I guess, or explain a little bit about why you guys like Brandon Marsh so much? Obviously, you can play great defense, a lot of swing and miss, though, with the bat, and then the cost of giving up a, you know, a top 100 prospect uh, in Logan O'Hoppy for him. Sure. Um, great question. And, you know, because we really are in a position where, um, and of course, we gave up a couple of guys that we didn't really want to give up, which if you're trying to win, sometimes you have to do that. But in Logan's case, um, a few things. First of all, we love him. I think he's a very good prospect. I um, think he has a chance to be an everyday, a good everyday major league catcher. Um, however, we also have a, an all-star catcher signed for three more years that's playing very well at a high level. We have some depth still behind them uh, in the organization. Um, and, and we've always said if we're going to trade Logan O'Hoppy, I have said, and we've talked about this, we want to trade him for a young positional player at another a spot that we can plug in and have that person there for years to come, not be part of a package for a veteran type of guy, because that's how highly regarded he is. Um, so in March's acquisition, a few things. First of all, he has was, um, and he's going through that difficult growth time at the big league level, which is not easy. There's a lot of swing and miss, 
but we also have had our people look at him. Um, he's hit in the past. Um, our hitting people think that there's some fixes for him that are, are not very difficult. He's a very talented individual. Um, he is a premium defensive center fielder. We, we, we continue to talk about offense. Um, there were other center fielders that were, might've been available, but they, we didn't think they were as good at defensive players as him. And he's been a, when you talk about Logan, the type of prospect he is and at this time, well, Brandon Marsh was the same type of quality prospect. He is also a top hundred prospect uh, and has been for, for years. And it was a high draft choice. And of course, I've had a chance to follow him for an extended period when he was drafted. So, for us, he's going through that growth phase that we think we can help him with. He's a hard, very hard worker. He's a gamer. Um, but I also just love the way he improves our defense and center field. And we're in a position where we think we'll, get, we'll help him to hit. But it's like, you know, it's like last year, if you talked about, let's say, Bone. Well, he was struggling last year. Um, he's a different hitter now. We, um, hey, Stott's hitting 190-something this year. And we like Bryson Stott a lot. We think he's going to be a very good hitter and we think the same with him so it's a situation where we're excited to get him um, to work with him and when I say that I know he's striking out too much but he does have eight home runs and 37 or 38 RBIs whatever it is so there's some offensive contributions there already and we think he continue to grow in that regard we'll go to Scott next and then Jim Dave you uh you just called Marsh, you know, a premium defensive center fielder, and you referred to Sosa earlier, uh, you know, getting him uh, over the weekend. Uh, last week, you kind of talked about starting pitching vis-a-vis -vis Eflin and that being kind of a thing you wanted to go after. How much did you go into this week looking at defense and thinking like, you know, if we can improve our defense up the middle in particular uh, the way you did, that that was something you were really targeting or did it kind of just – sort of materialized for you that way with those guys being available? Well, it really just sort of materialized. Um, I mean, it's been a goal of ours to, to get better defensively. And I know that it looks like we only believe in slug. Well, I do believe it. We do believe in slug and slug in the ball, and we'll continue to believe in that. However, you have to kind of deal with what players are available at particular times if you're trading career-wise, wherever it may be. I mean, if you ask me, ideally, what would you like to do? I'd like to have, of course, guys that are good defensively everywhere. But, in, but really, up the middle, you want to be strong defensively, but you can be. I mean, so, you know, we got an outstanding defensive catcher. You know, Stott's a, a young player that's going to be good defensively, is and is going to be better, continue up the middle. Marsh is now outstanding in center field. I mean, Sosa fits that for the future. We'll see if he ends up being it. But I think the Sosa acquisition was more coincidental. We didn't anticipate him being available. We did get, after we acquired him, we got calls about him from a couple of organizations right off the bat trying to get him. And um, in Marsh's case, and we've talked about Marsh since last winter time. We tried to get him. And when I was, we, we really have liked him. We were not able to acquire him last winter. For whatever, again, Logan O'Hoppy's growth has a lot to do with it. They've always liked Logan O'Hoppy, as a lot of clubs do. But the Angels are a club that really identified him. And so it was just the right fit for us at this time because we think we have a young, controllable, positional player uh, in center field for, I mean, for at least five years then after this year. Um, so you sacrifice only one year's of service. And a guy who's ready to produce, we think, at the big league level and, and even grow more. If I can also ask you just on, on Syndergaard, I know that um, this is, you know, he's got an expiring contract, and so this might be a short-term thing. But when you talk about his stuff um, and how it's different, you know, is he, to you, you know, to you and to you guys, is he kind of a pitcher coming off Tommy John surgery who may, the stuff may come back? Or is he at the point in his career where he's evolving into a different kind of pitcher? than he's been well I can't speak for the block because of course I never know that at this point I would say maybe he'll gain some but we didn't acquire him with that idea we came to, we acquired him with the idea this is who he is right now we have him for two more months at this year just like we have Robertson for two more months and we really we like him a lot too but it's a situation where um we're looking at him as being this guy with the real good sinker and he's got good control at this point um and being more of a pitcher than he was I mean, throwing hundred miles an hour and being able to blow that ball by people. We didn't acquire him with that in mind. 
I mean, that's the type of guy with premium stuff. He still has good stuff, but it's not that same premium stuff. And, and we're not looking for him to get that back. We're just thinking that this is the guy we're acquiring, the guy that, that's throwing right now. Dave, did you take on all of Syndergaard's remaining salary? Yes, we did. Okay. And so you just mentioned Anaheim get back with you 15 minutes before the deadline. How comfortable would you have been with your day if your phone didn't ring with Anaheim calling you back 15 minutes before? Well, I still would have been comfortable. Um, I, I think that, um, again, you we wanted to do that. I still would have been comfortable. I really like the addition of Marsh and Robertson uh, today already. Um, so that was was big for us. I think the it's kind of the end. It's like, great, we were able to add that spot because, I mean, basically what we had talked about is that we have two guys that we really do like and Falter and Sanchez that ideally have been our um, protection, really, right, our depth. We were prepared to use them with a strong bullpen and do it that way. And if we didn't come up with a deal that we weren't comfortable, we would have done that. But all the much better that we're also to address our starting pitching situation. And then we'll see what happened with Zach Eflin as we go on uh, in the future during the year. But we're thrilled to have gotten, gotten him. So would have been happy, but not as happy as we are having acquired. And how much interest were there in um, Abel, Painter, and McGarry? Tremendous. I mean, everywhere. Even people calling us to see if they got to acquire them in huge trades to be part of other deals. So, I mean, just off the, the charts. And, uh, and for, I mean, really, unfortunately, until today, except with O'Hoppy's case with the Angels and some others, I, I couldn't get anybody off of those names. Those are the three names that just kept coming up. And any deal, if you're going to make a deal, well, it takes it takes. Abel or okay, we'll get off of Abel or Painter, but then we want McGarry, and um, we just didn't want to trade those guys. Thank you, Matt Gelb. We'll go back to you. The one of the pitchers you did trade, Ben Brown. What was the organization's uh, perspective on him after you know in the middle of this breakup breakout season? Like, what did you guys see him as, and you were comfortable trading him, obviously, for a reliever, um, yeah. you know, a rental reliever. Well, it's probably the one that hurt the most, you know, in the sense and not that, you know, I think in Mickey's case, we really like Mickey. I um, think he still has a chance to be a good player. I think he may benefit himself. And I told him this when I talked to him on the phone from a change of scenery will not be uh, harmful for him. You know, Sanchez is a young positional player that we like. Um, but really, in Ben Brown's case, we like him a lot. We think he has a chance to be a good major league pitcher. Um, it just really came down at the time that you can't protect everybody. Um, and if we're going to try to get into the postseason and get a guy like David Robertson, who we think is as good a reliever that was out there, that um, there was a cost that was attached to that. And um, you use him from a kind of a combination, but he was just going to be moved to double A uh, in Brown's case. So we like him. We like him a lot. But fortunately, again, you never have enough pitching. But that is also one of those where um, we still have – three guys like we just talked about that we think are premium and have a chance to move very quickly and in addition with our big league staff and we have uh you know guys for a couple of years here when you have the wheeler and you have nola uh, and we have suarez and then we still have walter and we have sanchez so we've got some depth at the upper levels too and can you give us an idea uh with bryce like will he pick up a bat this week do you guys know what's going on in terms of his hitting progression um, I do not even know that. Um, I, I know he's swinging a bat. Uh, he can swing a bat. Um, what the what the progression is right this very moment, because I just actually I saw him yesterday. I happened to run into him. I knew he was at the ballpark and I, I walked out to get something. I ran in and talked to him. And he had already was, had worked out, put in a full day. I was thrilled that the pins were out and um, and he was doing some tea work already. But as far as the next progression, um, I kind of let the training staff handle that one. Um, and don't know exactly when that will be. We have time for a couple more. We'll go to John and then Jamie. Hey, Dave, you mentioned uh, some of those top, top prospects that other teams wanted. Was there any kind of deal that was broached by another club, um, a, a bigger, bigger deal that 
kind of had you thinking or debating at all? No, we never really came. We never discussed their names at all. People continually asked for them, but no, we did not do that. The, the only, like I've said, you never have really untradeable players. I mean, I don't think you'd say, yeah, you're never going to trade. You listen on anybody. I think that's just the way you do it, but it would have taken a really something special. And also just, you know, I, I think I've talked about, I think we're getting closer, but we're not quite there as far as an organizational perspective that I really did not want to per se mortgage our future for one of those big, big deals and try to make deals. And, you know, you're going to have to give up some prospects, um, which we did, but also be in a position where um, it really was not of our, our interest to try to trade those guys. And even in a hoppy, the only reason he really fell into it, we think we're getting a young, really good player also for him in return that we'll have for a long time. And how important to you is the postseason experience with David Robertson? Oh, it's important. There's no question about it. I mean, it's, um, he's been through it. Um, he's been through everything really as a big league reliever in high leverage situations. Uh, it's very important for us to, because we're hopeful to be able to experience it. And we're going to be in some big games here down the stretch that are going to be important to try to win. And, and I know that he'll be able to handle those situations. Thank you. Uh, Dave, that kind of leads me into my question. Um, you know, you were talking about it, this whole group and you talked individually about what they bring to the table, but collectively, um, go to get into the playoffs is the name of the game. It's been a long time. Collectively with these three new players, how much better are you suited for the playoffs today than you were yesterday? Well, I think we're, we're, better situated. I mean, and, I, and I've always said over the last time period that anything that we do, you, you need to factor in the additions of Segura and Harper to that because they're huge additions to us. So I definitely think we're more prepared for it. I, it's like to me in a situation for us, if we can get in there, I think we have, and again, you have to assume that you're relatively healthy because anybody can happen to anybody and we have depth, but if you lose the wrong guys, it's, it's not very good, but I think when we're in a position where um, our everyday lineup is in there, we can hit good pitching as well as anybody. It's not easy to hit good pitching, but if we can do it as well as anybody, I think our bullpen is deep right now and it has been good. And I think our starters in a short series, we have some really good um, starting pitchers, you know, with Wheeler and Nola topping off. We like Suarez and, and Syndergaard and, and Gibson are solid. So I, I think we're in a position where we really shape up um, to be a good club, but you know, you, you have to go play hard every single day and, and continue to battle. And we've been doing that. So I, I anticipate that we'll continue to do that. All right, Dave, thank you very much for your time, everybody. Thank you for your time and patience, and we will talk to you soon. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.